We're hearing all the insight from everyone here at Flame 2018. Very pleased to say with me now is Klaus Schaefer, of course, the CEO of Uniper, also the president of Eurogas. Klaus, thank you very much for your time. Um, sure. How, how many years have you been coming to Flame, dare I ask? I think it must have been uh, the uh, spring of 2010 for the first time. Mm -hmm. So again, probably my eighth year now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you look maybe back at the last 12 months, mm -hmm. Do you feel a lot has changed in the industry or? I think every time I'm here, I'm getting asked that question. And every time, rightly, I say a lot has indeed changed. Mm -hmm. When we look in terms of what's the outlook in LNG, for example, what's the discussions around gas infrastructure across Europe, uh, what's sort of like the, the pricing environment, uh, what's about the geopolitical tensions and, uh, and things that have emerged. And again, last 12 months, certainly pretty dramatic changes uh, that we've seen. What about uh, for Unipa going forward? What would your priorities be now? Where are you looking? I mean, on the gas side, certainly, I think it's an opportunity right now for a company like us to again sort of expand on the midstream side, on the gas side, to also reach outside of uh, Europe because with now the increasing links through US LNG of US pricing, European pricing, matching and mixing of the, uh, the portfolios, creating a larger presence also in the US and again sort of like through LNG on the Asian markets. I think for us a big opportunity that we definitely will go for. You were asked the same thing last year actually where you saw the biggest opportunities mm -hmm. and you were looking at security supply products mm -hmm. in Europe, linking markets, huge flexibility you were saying in Europe mm -hmm. there uh, and also you were still saying about conventional energy that mm -hmm. was still a priority. I mean sure. do you think all of those still hold true? I think that holds true. I mean, again, sort of like some of that is obviously repeat answers in terms yeah. of the European market linking, especially US and Asia, the large flexibility that the European market has, and therefore providing that flexibility to the, uh, to the LNG markets, security of supply in Europe. If we looked at last year, it was maybe even a bit tougher, the winter and therefore the spirit, obviously, in terms of coming here. But also this year, we finished the winter with about 15% left in storage that's normally beyond the technical minimum on the, on the storage side. And therefore, I do believe that uh, clearly security of supply going forward is going to be crucially important. And therefore, some of the topics obviously repeat topics. But again, especially with more and more US LNG now coming on stream, I think that link between the US and Europe is gaining more momentum each year. Uh, although we've, we're seeing the US selling into Asian markets. It doesn't matter. I think in the end, as always, sort of like it depends on the last sort of like vessel or the last cubic meter of gas that's being supplied in the market in order to have the pricing impact, a price cap, knowing if prices would go above a certain level, suddenly sort of like we detract a lot more of LNG. Mm -hmm. And therefore it's exactly that swing sort of like sink that the European market is offering to the global LNG market. And I think we already sort of like see that in action. And if prices are high in Asia, sort of like that's a big benefit for the European consumers and the European customers in the end. And I think that's positive as well. Mm -hmm. What role do you think gas is actually going to play within Europe? And I don't know whether you want to mm -hmm. answer that as CEO of Unipa or as president of Eurogas or whether matter. it's the same mm -hmm. answer. I think it's okay. the same answer. Mm -hmm. I think gas sort of like obviously had a challenging time over the last years. Mm -hmm. I think now sort of like especially, I think the, the key driver for that is actually the, the market for CO2. Mm -hmm. The ETS, because I mean, now with the rise that we've seen up to 14 and possibly even much more in the in the future, that obviously also changes and the the, the question sort of like what to use in the generation market, coal or gas, yeah, and therefore that fuel switching that slowly starts to happen. And I think therefore sort of like going forward, I think gas will have an even bigger role than in terms of security supply and also in the in the generation mix. Again, a slow process, but one that at least has started. Mm -hmm. You mentioned coal. I mean, different countries within Europe have got very, very different sort mm -hmm. of uh, percentages of coal or mm -hmm. attitudes or outlook on coal. Mm -hmm. How do you see that going? And indeed, sort of like I think in a lot of the, the European countries, we have an exit discussion for coal. So, uh, uh, I mean, you look at France, sort of like 2022. You look at the UK, 2025. You look at the Netherlands, 2030. Yeah, and you look at Germany, that has slowly now started a discussion. Let's see where that leads to. But I think it will be a less sort of like formal end date there. And more questions sort of like what's the trajectory over time in terms of reducing that. But we should not forget one topic, sort of like there's a security of supply issue in there. Because I mean, today, sort of like in a lot of the countries, including Germany, it's coal that sort of like does the delivery of security of supply. Now that can move over to gas, 
but nevertheless we should also make sure that there's enough gas generation capacity in the future because a pure electricity supply from sun and wind will not be enough. Yeah, it's fabulous sort of like technology and I think renewables obviously are sort of like a key driver on the electricity market but it will not work without sort of like dispatchable capacity and if we don't want nuclear to play that role because in a lot of studies sort of like you see that nuclear is actually the the sort of like swing supply on the electricity side. If we don't want nuclear to play that role, and I think from a society and an acceptance point of view, maybe sort of like people want something different. And if we want to exit from coal, then we need to focus on gas and actually sort of like make sure we have the necessary infrastructure and also the necessary generation capacity for gas to play exactly that role. Do you want to cast your mind ahead to this time next year and wonder mm -hmm. what is on the agenda for flame this time next year? Again, it will be, I think, an evolution of topics. I think I, I cannot see that sort of like that there are radical topics ahead. I think the question of geopolitics, especially when it comes to infrastructure in Europe, possible sanctions, topics like that, they obviously have the potential to get sort of uh, uh, more sort of preeminent and, and more sort of like uh, in the focus of the, the gas industry. I think the question of technology, green gas, synthetic gas, those topics, I think also they will evolve because I think in the end, if we want decarbonization in Europe, and there's obviously an overwhelming majority for that, the Paris Agreement has been signed, and if we therefore want a decarbonized energy system, it also means that gas has to decarbonize to be still around in 2050, and I think that's also a progress uh, or process that now needs to be really pushed and, uh, and started, and we had good discussions on uh, flame this year on that topic and I would see that as an even more preeminent topic next year, uh, uh, which really drives the future of the gas market. Indeed. Well, we'll find out next year. Mm -hmm. Klaus Schaefer, for the moment, thank you very much. A pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you.